Al, thank you. Coach, last week at Oakland, your run defense gave up 234 yards on the ground, 7.3 yards per carry, the most a Rex Ryan defense has given up on an NFL field. How do you rectify that against Ray Rice and company tonight? Well, it's certainly going to be a challenge for us, but uh, I think that was more of a, uh, you know, I, mean, I don't know where that came from, that performance. But, um, uh, you know, I think we'll definitely play better tonight, but it is a challenge against a, a, a great back like Ray Rice. Meanwhile, tonight you face a Ravens defense that has your fingerprints all over it. Last year in New York, they held you to three field goals. How do you get your offense into the end zone tonight? Well, I just think we, uh, you know, we played a little tight the last time we played them. This time, you know, we're not playing to lose. We're playing to win, and we're going to let it go. Coach, thanks for the time. All right. Meanwhile, Al, the Jets are without all-pro center Nick Mangle tonight, out with that high right ankle sprain. He'll be replaced for the second straight week by rookie Colin Baxter. And there's been a little bit of rain coming and going tonight. We've had it throughout the pregame. We expect it throughout the game, along with some wind gusts, Al. And, of course, we're waiting for Indian summer, but it's not here tonight. 48 degrees of game time, and there is a man very much in the crosshairs, the rookie Baxter, Ray Rice. Had a big day last week in St. Louis, and Nick Falk, who was the hero on opening night when his field goal won the game at the end at the Meadowlands to knock off Dallas to kick off to Laquan Williams. The Jets had won the toss and have deferred. So their defense will go to work immediately as we get underway on this Sunday night from Maryland. Fielded at the one by Williams. And Williams loses the ball. The ball is loose at the 14-yard line. And it is Joe McKnight who saves the day for the Jets. Because the ball popped loose. Created by McKnight. And McKnight is the guy who blocked the kick. The big kick against Dallas on opening night. And the Ravens are able to recover the football back at the 13-yard line. I am Bedejo who just saved him. That is not the way you want to start for a uh, young rookie. He had trouble right from the get-go as he short hopped the ball at the one-yard line. So now Flacco takes over at the 13-yard line. They start from the shotgun on first down. Flacco rolling away, extending the play, and then just dumps it toward the line of scrimmage, pressured by DeVito. And let's take a look at the Baltimore starters. Joe Flacco, University of Delaware. Ray Rice, Rutgers University. Fonte Lee, East Carolina. Anquan Bowden, Florida State University. Torrey Smith, Maryland. Ed Dixon, Oregon Ducks. Brian McKinney, the U. Andre Gerard, Colorado. Matt Burke, Harvard. Marshall Yonda, Iowa. Michael Orr, North Memphis, Tennessee. You saw that flag come in very late for grounding. It didn't come out at first. But he did not get outside of the tackle box as we designated here with the red line. It was pretty close, Al. He did make a move to get outside. Let's see how close he gets to there. He's out. Yep, I think he is too. But he has to get it back toward the line of scrimmage. And he was just really dumping it there just to get away and avoid the sack. So they called it. Well, like we talked about in the open, it's one thing to throw it 48 times against the Rams. Another thing to throw it 48 times here. And... I'll tell you, Ray Rice is the guy I'd be getting the ball to. Second and 15. That's Leach, the fullback, and that's Rice. And Rice over right guard, and he'll get bottled up as he reaches the 10-yard line. Setting up a third down and 13. And a little pushy shovey at the start here. How good has Flacco been in this stadium? Last 12 games, which is a season and a half of home games, 22 touchdown passes, two interceptions, and they won 11 of those 12 games. Yeah, he's been impressive, and he, more and more, we saw him in practice. He has taken over this offense. He looked like Peyton Manning out there directing traffic. They are putting the ball in his hands and letting him make the decisions. Third down and 13. He had a field day last week in St. Louis. Hangs in the pocket, throws, the catch is made, and that's Dixon fighting for the first down and getting it. Donald Strickland was able to stop him momentarily before he'd reached the first down mark, and then he's able to chug forward those extra two yards to move the chains. Yeah, nice job here by Dixon. He did not have this first down. Really, all you've got to do from Donald Strickland is get the tackle. You can see he's probably two yards short and just can't stop him. 
first time that the Jets defense has given up a first down when the opposition's had a third and ten or longer this season. Flacco on first down. Checks down, goes to Rice on the outside, second and ten. Let's take a look at the Jets starters. Mike DeVito, University of Maine. Sheldon Boha, University of Utah. Mo Wilkins, Temple Isle. Brian Thomas, UAB. Dave Harris, Ottawa Hills. Bart Scott, Southeastern Jungleers. Calvin Pace, Wake Forest. Darrell Rivas, Pitt. Eric Smith, Michigan State. Jim Leonard, Wisconsin. Antonio Cromartie, Florida State. Leonard and Scott, two guys who went from here to New York when Ryan got the job. Now a screen is set up, and this is Pitta, the number two tight end, and he picks up a first down. Dennis Pitta, second-year guy out of Brigham Young, and he picks up the second first down of this drive for the Ravens. It's a gain of 14. Yeah, good play that time by the Ravens. They put Ray Rice in motion going out this way, and they know how much the Jets are going to key on him, and then they screen to the backside, so they're trying to give him some counter reads early in this one. From the 38. Off play action, and Flacco uses a ton of play action. Going deep and too deep, intended for Torrey Smith, who became a sudden star last week. He's covered by Revis, and this is going to be some matchup tonight. Well, Torrey Smith, the rookie, out here on Revis Island. There's nobody else on that half of the field, and Flacco has a chance to hit him, but Revis right there in his hip pocket. Of course, it was Torrey Smith scored three touchdowns in the first quarter last week and has finally given the Ravens a bit of a deep threat that they really have not had since Joe Flacco's been here. Coming out party for the ages, second round draft choice, played his college ball down the road at the University of Maryland. Again, off play action, and that is knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Brian Thomas. We talk about play action. Flacco uses play action about a third of the time, more than any quarterback in the league over the past couple of seasons. Now we're starting to see some uh, pressure coming off the edge now. There's Brian Thomas right on the end of the line of scrimmage, and the Ravens counter trying to sneak Vontae Leach out. But at least thus far, David Harris has been all over the backs. Whoever's coming out of the backfield, that's been David Harris's assignment. And now, before a third and ten, the Ravens take a timeout. Sunday Night Football from Baltimore being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. You can find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL, here we go. By Wendy's, you know when it's real. And by Lexus, it's time to engineer amazing. Maryland Blue Crabs, little brickies on Pratt Street. Here in Walmart. MT Bank Stadium on this chilly Sunday night. Each team 2 and 1 coming in after a timeout. Third and 10 for the Ravens from their own 38 yard line. They've already converted a third and 13. And Flacco stepping up to avoid the pressure and then does a 360 to come away again and buy time. And he was on and the pass is incomplete. So a good rush that time included. In that rush was Aaron Maben, just recently re-signed, third-year former Buffalo Bill, and it's fourth down. I don't know if I've seen anybody run as many laps as Aaron Maben just did. Just signed this week because Rex Ryan was unhappy with his pass rush, showing good hustle. <laughs> just got, <laughs> chasing him around the uh, mulberry bush there, but uh, finally gets enough pressure to force Flacco to throw it away. Sam Cook, one of the best punters in the league, to send it down to the rookie. Jeremy Curley out of TCU, fifth-round draft pick. In the spring, from the 20, Curley oh. with a flag down. It's whacked by Laquan Williams. What a makeup tackle there. Mike Carey is tonight's referee. I think he's 
first and 54, Nick Delore, so that would move the ball. As Carey comes down to the 19 yard line now, and they'll reposition before the Jets begin their first drive of the game. And there's the man very much in the spotlight, Colin Baxter, a rookie from Arizona. Wasn't even with the Jets in camp, he was in San Diego's camp. They waived him at the end of August. Just signed him just before the start of the season. And with the All Pro Mangold out for the second week in a row, and there is Nick Mangold, who was a game time decision. Came out, worked out before the game, couldn't cut it. Back in comes Baxter, who's listed at 6'3, 310. And he'll have his hands full tonight with, among others, Haloki Naka. And look out as Sanchez gets hit from behind and the ball is loose. That was Ed Reed who knocks the ball loose and the Ravens have scored. Jameel McLean comes up with the loose ball and takes it in. And how about Ed Reed? The all-pro safety on the first play coming from the blind side to get the sack fumble and the ensuing touchdown. Well, Ed Reed is going to the Hall of Fame for many reasons, and there's ones. Here's what sets it up, though. Suggs jams inside on Debrickashaw Ferguson. Short in the edge there for Ed Reed, who gets a straight path to Sanchez. And that looks like a fumble all the way out, do you think? I think so. And, you know, of course, they're looking at it upstairs. The Jets coaches are to see if they want to challenge it. They, well, he can't challenge him because he winds up as a scoring play. That's the interesting thing here. In the old days, you could challenge this. Is the arm coming forward now because it, it results in a touchdown and not the ball being recovered in the field of play. It's up to the guys upstairs. He gave it the pump fake, and if the ball had come out on the pump fake, he would have been fine. We would have had the tuck rule, but I don't know about that one. Well, now they're going to they're review it upstairs. So it's up to the guys upstairs, and Mike Carey will take a look under the hood. Still reviewing from upstairs. We think that the call is going to stand because he pump fakes, Sanchez does. Then as he's coming forward the second time, here's Mike Carey. After review, the ruling on the field stands. <laughs> Never saw a read coming. You'll take a look. There's the pump fake, and then before he can get the arm coming forward again, it's Reed who forces it out of his hand. And it's a great job by Reed not going for the hit, going for the ball. I think that if he had done the other, wouldn't have gotten it out. Now Billy Cundiff for the extra point. And three minutes, two seconds into the game. Reed last year, eight interceptions in ten games, missed six. And you anybody who's watched him play through the years knows that this guy winds up in Canton. Well, Colin Baxter right here, everybody's thinking they're going to try and help against him. So they bring everybody inside to shorten the edge so Ed Reed can get the direct path to Mark Sanchez. And he gets there just in time thanks to that pump fake. So in a battle of defenses, it's the Ravens that strike first. Yeah, Ed Reed, it's like a 40-yard dash getting in there, but you can't give a superstar like that free access. You saw what Sanchez was thinking. I'm just going to get the ball out quickly, but when he had to pull it back down, that was just enough time for the great All-Pro. Reed's all over the field, but he's not like Colomalo in that. He doesn't blitz that often. That's only the second sack that he's had over the last eight seasons. And there are the Ravens since 2002 going back a little bit more than eight years ago with all of those return touchdowns. And the two longest interception returns in NFL history are both via Ed Reed. So big plays have been a part of his resume for a long, long time. And now Cundiff, who was the master of the touchback last year when they were kicking off from the 30 sends this one about seven yards in and Joe McKnight's going to run it back and McKnight with a ton of speed McKnight into Ravens 
territory, being chased from behind, inside the 20, inside the 10, and he's in for the touchdown, 107 yards. How much does Joe McKnight love Sunday night football? Oh, boy. Game-changing block punt the first time around, and this was just a walk straight down the park here. Longest play in the history of the New York Jets, 107 yards. I mean, we have seen more kickoff returns from the back of the end zone this year than ever in the history of the league. Oh, boy, they may have gotten away with one a little bit right there. But Joe McKnight takes full advantage. And that's the one thing that moving the kickoff up to the 35 has created those long runbacks. We saw it on opening night in Green Bay. Here it is again. The extra point is good by Nick Folk. And what a beginning to this one. Mike Westhoff, the special teams coordinator and his group normally does a scintillating job. Well, there's the two-man wedge you can see there. That's all you're allowed in the NFL right now. And they peel out two and then a little block in the side. We'll call that one a non-block, but that was all Joe McKnight needed. Boy, what a start to this game. You mm. think, oh boy, let's talk about offense and we get special teams and Joe McKnight. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever run. You see him looking up at the screen? He's like, wait a minute, now I got two guys on my tail here. That bear jumped on his back just a little bit. So between 01 and 2010, 15 jet kick return touchdowns. And of course, that has a lot to do with, with Mike Westhoff, who is regarded around the league as one of the premier special teams coaches. What a start. No scoring drives in this game, but 14 points. It's incredible. I'll tell you, Mike Westhoff has done it time after time, hasn't he? They have scored more touchdowns on kickoff returns during his time than any other team in football. And now Folk. And this will be a returnable kick. Laquan Williams, who had trouble on that opening kickoff when he fumbled, but the Ravens recovered, and he gets hit at the 20 yard line. And a flag is down. During the return, holding, receiving team number 54. Half the distance to the goal, they retain possession, first down. So Rex Ryan he couldn't believe what happened last week. I heard him talking to Michelle before the game. 234 rushing yards for the Raiders. He looked at the statistics this week, and somebody pointed out that they were 31st in rushing defense, and he said there must be 1,000 teams in the league. <laughs> yeah, he said you have to go back 15 years when I was in Arizona before I saw anything like that. After the penalty, the ball at the 11 and now Rice. Slants over the left side after the 14 for a gain of about three yards. And another flag. Holding offense number 65. After distance to the goal, still first down. Andre, Andre Garage just got signed by the Ravens, longtime Dallas Cowboy. They let him go, and he winds up here in Baltimore. Gerard, I thought last week got away with a couple of holds as well and just an old veteran player. But here, really, he's just going to grab hold of the guy and sling him to the ground and got called for a hold on that one. So now Joe Flacco and company back up again. They are not young on the left side of this offensive line. Matt Burke, Andre Gerard, Brian McKinney, all top-notch players, but uh, all coming here basically because other teams didn't want them anymore. McKinney and Gerard each in their 10th year in Burke. The center in his 14th season. And now Rice will cut it back. And Rice out to the 16-yard line. And so 09, only Chris Johnson in Tennessee has gained more yards from scrimmage than has Rice. It's really a new-look running game now for the Ravens. All these stretch plays and zone runs, 
but they really can go anywhere on the field. And talking with some of the Jets defenders before this game, they said the hardest part about trying to defend against Rice is you can't see him. They have this huge offensive line out there, and you're trying to find him, and all of a sudden you see all the traffic coming to your right, and he cuts all the way back, just as you saw it there. Stays out of sight at 5'8", 212 pounds. Short drop. Quick toss over the middle, and that's a first down to the tight end, Ed Dixon, taking the spot. Occupied by the longtime outstanding tight end, Todd Heat, now with Arizona. Well, once again, they take Ray Rice and flank him out. Cromarty has him in coverage. But by doing that, what you're doing is opening some lanes for the inside passing games. He's really been just a decoy so far for this Ravens offense. From the 23 now. Dixon in motion. A lot of leverage on that left side, and there's Rice. Leverage in that Dixon moved that way, and they went out and they signed the fullback, Fonte Leach, from the Houston Texans during the offseason, and Joe Flacco and Ray Rice in particular were thrilled about that. Yeah, Ray said he got up off the massage table when he heard the news and started jumping up and down, and Fonte Leach has actually been kind of putting on a clinic as it concerns the zone run plays. He said, even the coaches said, he, we came in and he started telling us how to do it, and so we started doing it that way. Hit the way for Arian Foster at Houston, and that is caught by Smith, and the rookie out of Maryland to the 26-yard line, tackled there by Cromarty. They drafted Smith. They wanted him, of course, to stretch the field. They give Flacco that deep threat. And then he had trouble in camp, and he was dropping a lot of balls, and people were thinking, well, wait a minute, is this guy going to be a bust or what? Which, you know, after a month, who's going to say that a guy can, is a bust? And then last week, three touchdown receptions on the first three catches of his career. Pretty remarkable young man, how he grew up and raising his younger siblings. Uh, that's a noose. Well, Burke gave it a half snap. Illegal snap. Offense number 77 at the five-yard penalty. It's still third down. In golf, what do they call that? The yips? He gave it the yips. The Harvard guy gave it to you. Gave it the yips there. Overthought it. What's this? He's got, mm. I, no, that, wait a minute. That wasn't a count. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that. Long time Minnesota Viking. Gets reunited with Bryant McKinney now playing left tackle along that offensive front third down 13 now a little over eight minutes to play in the opening quarter and a wild start 7-7 Flacco throws and that is caught Rice makes the catch and Rice gets into Jets territory and a big game all the way down to the 26 yard line Here's what they're hoping for. You get Ray Rice one-on-one -on -one against anybody. They're going to take that matchup. You're seeing the Jets playing a lot of six and seven defensive backs because they don't feel like a linebacker can cover Ray Rice one-on-one. -on -one. Look at how they're doing this. There is nobody on this defensive left side over here. And Joe Flacco threw right into the blitz that was coming at him for a big play. 52 yards, and Eric Smith couldn't make the tackle, and that cost him about 30 yards. Ricky Williams is now the back on first and 10, and Flacco in trouble. Rolling and throwing, a flag is thrown, and the pass is broken up in the end zone. Intended for Anquan Bolden. And Brian Thomas is hurt on the play. The Jets have really had a bit of an issue with their pass rush this year. Big reason why Maven has been activated and one of their leaders. Holding. Defense number 31. Five yard penalty, automatic. First down. That's Antonio Cromarty who had four penalties called against him last week in addition to bruising his ribs and his lung injury timeout. And you can enhance your viewing experience for Sunday Night Football by logging on to NBCSports.com slash SNF Extra. Pick your own camera angle. Mike Florio available to chat. Show with reports from the sideline. 
all there. Now, they work on Thomas's foot or ankle. Jamal Westerman comes in to take his spot. And here's the hold on Cromarty. Kind of just gave him a little shot to the face mask. I don't know, holding, but maybe illegal contact out of that. But the beat goes on for Cromarty, who really had a tough day last week. And anyways, kind of cost him the game. Four penalties and fumbly kick return. Here's Ricky Williams, still around in his 11th year out of the University of Texas Heisman Trophy winner. And of course, uh, he'll always be known for the fact that Mike Ditka traded his whole draft class. For the opportunity to to bring Ricky, and then through the years, uh, at one point he was going to become a massage therapist. Went to California, retired, back and forth, up and down, and here he is backing up Ray Rice in Baltimore. And he can still run it though. Watched him a week ago, and he popped a few big ones. Second down and seven. Good protection. Flacco throws. And the pass is behind Smith and incomplete. Eric Smith was there for the coverage, the safety going back, and Torrey had to reach behind him and couldn't hold on. Well, Eric Smith's going to have a shot at this one and yeah. just Ball. slipped barely on the play. Michael Orr on the outside, blocking one of the largest human beings I've ever seen, Rapati Pitoi Tua. Michael Orr is <laughs> kind of one of those amazing guys that coaches say sometimes he's too fast. His feet are too quick. He can overset and miss blocks trying to get outside too quickly. Third and seven. And Flacco to the corner of the end zone and incomplete. Crowd wants a flag on that one. Kyle Wilson covering Ed Dixon. Kyle Wilson. Kind of reaches over the top as this ball is coming down to Dixon, who's in great position. Tries to pull that away. I think that's a oh boy. Close. It's close. 38 yard attempt now for Billy Cundiff. Puts it down. Kind of bangs it through, and the Ravens have the lead again. Six and a half to go in the opening quarter. Ten to seven, ball four. Wednesday night, Christina Applegate, Will Arnett, Maya Rudolph, star in Up All Night, right here on NBC. That should be the name of a show about assistant coaches. Yeah, film study. And there's McKnight back to receive the kickoff. Cundiff and his last one run back 107 yards. And McKnight's going to try to top it from 108. And out he comes this time tackled at the 21 yard line by Tom Mikowski as we take a look at the offense for the New York Jets. Mark Sanchez, USC. Sean Green, Iowa. Mexico Burris, Michigan State. Santonio Holmes, B, Ohio State University. Derek Mason, Mumford High. Dustin Keller, Purdue University. The Brooklyn Show Ferguson, University of Virginia. Matt Slauson, Nebraska. Colin Baxter, Arizona. Brandon Moore, Illinois. Wayne Hunter, University of Hawaii. Well, the Jets have won one play, and that was the sack, fumble, and touchdown return. And now Sanchez on the center for only the second time in the game. And they give it to Green. Meanwhile, we can tell you that Brian Thomas with a flag here, and Mike Harry's been very busy with his crew. Thomas was carted back to the Jets' locker room. And we'll get a report on him. Offside, defense number 31, five yard penalty. First down, five yards to go. Bernard Pollard, the former Kansas City Chief, we've already had in the game seven accepted penalties. Well, right there, you're going to get Terrence Cody here working against Colin Baxter. And the one thing the Raiders did not do was put somebody right on Colin Baxter's nose last week. The few times they did, they had great success. Believe me, the Ravens will have somebody there all night tonight. 
first and five. Sanchez hit as he throws. Pass intended for Keller is incomplete. And let's take a look at the Baltimore D. Orpinata, Oregon. Tans Cody, Alabama. Corey Redding, University of Texas. Jarrett Johnson, Alabama. Ray Lewis, University of Miami. Jamel McLean, Syracuse University. Terrell Suggs, Duke and Downey University. Darius Webb, Nickel State University. Bernard Pollard, V. Boilermakers. Ed Reed, the U. Kerry Williams, Washington. Suggs with his ode to his parents, Duke and Donna. Terrell went to Arizona State for the record. Second down and five, and the snap is fumbled. At the 22-yard line, Sanchez tried to fall on it. The skirmish breaks out away from the play. And the Jets are going to maintain possession. It looked like the snap came up a little before Sanchez was ready. So back-to-back -back plays. It's been Colin Baxter right in the heart of this thing. The change out an all-pro center. He never got it. And in reality, the Jets are lucky to get that back. Sean Green recovers the fumble. Only because it hit Baxter in the leg did the Jets end up recovering now. Third and eight that brings LaDainian Tomlinson into the game. Keller and Tomlinson flanking Sanchez. Ravens pressure through the middle. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Santonio Holmes who gets doubled. And it's fourth down. I tell you, it's going to be a long night for Colin Baxter right here. They're going to bring all the pressure this way all night long. He tries to get one. LT tries to help. But you can see, once he's one-on-one, -on -one, he got a lot of compliments last week. But in the one-on-one -on -one situations, he had a tough time. Raven defense like going after an open wound. T.J. Conley to punt. Laquan Williams is back. It's a short kick. It bounces sideways at the 40-yard line, and from that spot, will the Ravens begin their next drive? Baltimore leading 10-7 first quarter. New York and Baltimore matched up in some fabled events. Babe Ruth was born here in Baltimore and played with the Yankees for 15 seasons. 58-59, the Colts beat the Giants in the first ever overtime game. You had Super Bowl three, the Jets and Baltimore. The Mets beat the Orioles in the 69 World Series. Ravens beat the Giants in the Super Bowl after the 2000 campaign. And tonight you get Ed Reed starting it out like this. That made it seven to nothing. McKnight answers like that. Baltimore has added a field goal and it's 10 to 7 and Chris I don't think there's any question you look at the history of the National Football League of professional football the two most significant games would have to be the overtime game in 58 and Super Bowl three yeah, New York Baltimore you know the, the greatest game ever played in 58 that was one of those that sort of uh, brought the NFL into a new era didn't it well that's as I say it's the first time a game ever went to overtime with Alan Amici scoring get to give him the victory as Ray Rice takes it to the 43 yard line and we check in with Michelle well, as you mentioned Brian Thomas left ankle questionable back in the locker room getting it checked out meanwhile Mark Sanchez was taking uh, snaps from Slauson down here on the sideline we don't know what that means yet Al but something to watch well, Slauson the guard and of course with Baxter having his troubles Mangold is out it's a mess up front right now. We'll see what happens when they come back out onto the field. See, I just think they have to have a bigger body in there that can handle that kind of size and strength that the Ravens can throw at them. Second and eight. Ton of time. Look at that protection for Flacco. Going for Smith. And it is incomplete. Trying to hit Torrey Smith, and it's Eric Smith back there covering on the play. And it will be third down and eight. Now this ball a little underthrown by Joe Flacco. You end up with your fastest wideout going down the middle of the field against the safety. You expect to win this battle. And I think if Flacco had led this ball a little bit more, he had him beat. But because it was underthrown, Eric Smith could get back to it. Exactly what you want. Your fastest guy going against the strong safety. You saw Revis peeling off to cover the outside guy. And now it's third and eight. Now you can see anything from the Jets. Dancing away. 
Buying time, under pressure, still on his feet. And that's a Roethlisberger-like play as he finally finds Ray Rice after Marcus Dixon chased him but couldn't bring him down. 12 yards. Oh, my goodness. Ray Rice almost decapitated Donald Strickland. Watch this block coming right here. And then gets up and catches the ball. Dong. That's you, know, you want to play me in man coverage? How about from your back? And what a play by Joe Flacco. Did look like Ben Roethlisberger. A little like Mike Vick as well. That was pretty strong. Good combo platter. A roll by Flacco. Cuts back the other way. Throws. Hits Bolden. There is Smith covering Bolden. And Bolden takes it inside the 20 for another Baltimore first down. Antoine Bolden making his first catch of the night. Joe Flacco is not flinching at all under this rush. He is hanging in there, and we're seeing the Ravens now taking advantage of the safeties in man coverage. I don't think Flacco really cares who it is that has the man coverage. If they're trying to cover any of his guys one-on-one -on -one with one of these safeties, Flacco's finding it. Eric Smith goes out. Broadney Poole now comes in. And the ball at the 17-yard line, and timeout is going to be taken by the Ravens. 2.42 left in the quarter. Ravens by three. Well, so far, Joe Flacco has been avoiding Revis Island. We thought we'd at least make an attempt to show you what Revis Island looks like on the outside. He is in charge of that island right there. All the territory as the defense overshifts to the other side and occasionally somebody takes a shot one on one against them and usually the end result is exactly that. When you have a corner a la Deion Sanders who can take away half the field, a lot of defenders in the other half. On first down after the timeout, Blanco throws and that's at the feet of Vontae Leach. It'll be second down and ten. One of the things that Darrell Rivas does such a great job, when somebody goes to his outside, he's going to take a direct path to cut you off. See how he does that? I'm surprised more corners don't. So you can't get behind him. The minute he sees you with an outside release, he takes a diagonal angle, cuts off the receiver. Now if you want to do something, you have to do it back inside. It's a very clever technique. Receivers can have more fun at Rikers Island than on Rivas Island. <laughs> Second and ten. And that is caught for a first down by Ed Dixon. Dixon to the three-yard line. The guy supplanting the longtime tight end, Todd Heat, makes it first down and goal. Well, they're really just isolating the linebackers in this coverage here. They're going after some weak spots. That time, Josh Monga had him in the coverage but he was trying to redirect the tight end going down the middle of the field spent too long and Joe Flacco caught it. 161 yards for Baltimore and minus four for the Jets and a first and goal. No gain for Ray Wright. at the line of scrimmage it'll be second and goal well one of the things that the Jets usually do very well is play the run they often forego the ability to go after the passer because they want to establish that they are going to stop the run first and foremost but occasionally and, and Rex Ryan talked about it this week that the guys have to do a better job transitioning when they see pass all right give up on the run let's go get after the quarterback and that's been one of the difficulties for this Jets defense so far this year Rice again over the left side touchdown Ravens Bonte Leach leading the way the fullback Picking him up from the Houston Texans and providing the convoy. Well, and remember that Brian Thomas is out, who's one of the top run playing outside linebackers. Jamal Westerman, who is a pass rusher, has taken his place, and that time Bonte Leach just overwhelmed him.
Cundiff getting ready to tack on the point. And, of course, every scoring play is reviewed, so Mike Carey has to wait until he gets the go-ahead from upstairs. They just want to make sure that he got into the end zone. And the knee is down there. The ball appears to be over the goal line. But who knows these days? Wouldn't overturn it based on that look. No. And now Carey's going to check it out. He's going to check out what the guys upstairs we'll are saying. The previous play. And we'll they want to the review play. it. Well, I don't know. I think it's pretty clear. It's not going to get overturned. It's the one difference in the NFL is they want the officials on the field to actually make the decision. So if it's borderline at all, there and there, and you really couldn't see the ball from the perfect angle shot there. Well, when the knee goes down, I mean, the hand doesn't count. The knee, of course, when that goes down, it's where, where the ball is. And I mean, to me, it's pretty simple. That's the inconsistency of this rule where there are times when it's great and there are other times when you're saying to yourself, what in the world are we doing this for? You don't have a lot of gray area in your life, do you? Well, I try. Well, yeah, cut, well. Cut dry, <laughs> We're trying to build a little drama here, you know? But, uh, we have enough drama. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, there's plenty of drama here for one Rex Ryan. John Harbaugh has done a magnificent job here in three years. He's won a playoff game in each of the years. Go back again here and watch the fullback. Yeah, just a pretty easy block, and you can see that Westerman is not one of those guys that is going to take on a fullback like Monte Leach and stuff that hole. So I would think that the Ravens have had a lot of success doing a lot of things here tonight, but that's got to be one of the top priorities to get Monte Leach in there after Jamal Westerman. So for the Jets, it's been a miserable start. Minus four in terms of yardage. Harris is out. You got a huge problem in the middle of the offensive line, and maybe you go to a, your guard playing center. And the Ravens are about ready to take a 10 point lead here when Mike Carey makes this official. Yeah, honestly, Al, I'm not sure I could name a position that would have caused more damage to the Jets against this defense than losing Nick Mangold. I really thought there was a chance that Mangold, even though we watched him in pregame warm-up and he couldn't do anything, I mean, he really was struggling just to kind of jog around out there, might give it a try just because they knew what was going to face them inside. You know, he was, he was out there, but clearly sort of limping around on that leg and a couple of mm -hmm. times sort of had to pull up a little bit. But just his body and against a defense that is so multiple, his ability to make calls, a big loss in this game. High ankle sprain for Mangold. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It's for our goal. That just took two minutes out of your life. I have it to spare. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Pretty soon we'll all be in the deep divot. <laughs> a minute and 14 <laughs> remaining. In the quarter as Cundiff gets ready to kick the extra point now. And the Ravens are on top by a score of 17 to 7. For Rex Ryan, 10 years on the staff. Started with Brian Billick, part of that Super Bowl winning team. He's a man of the people. I went for a walk in the Inner Harbor area today at about noon. It's freezing. And who do I run into? A guy wearing a New York Yankee road jersey, a sleeveless one, just walking around. It's Rex. There he is out in the middle, you know, enjoying the, uh, a, a little stroll in the afternoon. Of course, a lot of Jets fans are in town. Takes pictures with them, engages everybody. Has a good time. But not, not particularly in the first quarter tonight. Yeah, not tonight. And, and I think they all knew it. Uh, as we were visiting with them, they were all trying to say good things about Colin Baxter, the center. And, and I was like, yeah, you know, but they didn't test him. About the first four snaps of the Raiders game, they had somebody playing right over him, and he was struggling. I go, oh, boy, they're going to be getting after him all day. And then the rest of the game, they, they really didn't do it. But believe me, the Ravens noticed and knew exactly what they were going to do tonight. Cundiff, two deep 
kicks both returned by McKnight and this time not to be returned as he boots that one to the back chalk. Well a couple of the early difference making plays in this game is clearly the Ravens are coming after him. We end up with the fumbled snap early on. Don't know whose fault exactly that one was on the exchange. But here comes the double barrel glitch right over Baxter again. And it's a cruel game, you know. I mean, you get a guy who's really been only on the team for about three weeks in here, and they're going to attack him. That's the way it is. You get a weak link, and here it comes. From the 20. That open sore. Here's Green. And Green gives him a little pop. Now, at least they're in positive yardage for the quarter, plus one, gain of five. Ground and pound, the philosophy for Rex Ryan. Part of that had to do with the fact that Sanchez was the young quarterback, so they kept it on the ground. 160 rush yards a game and only 95 allowed for Jewish in the league. That was their hallmark, and those are the numbers, the ugly numbers thus far this season, despite the fact they're two and one. Second and five. And the pass is caught as Burris makes the catch out to the 33 yard line and that's the first first down for the Jets. All right. Well they completed the pass. Let's check back inside to see how Terrence Cody does on Baxter this time. Not too bad. They're going to give him a little bit of help on that one and that's the way it's going to have to be. And you see the quick throw from Mark Sanchez for the rest of the night. That's the way they're going to have to play it. End of the first quarter the Baltimore Ravens 17. And the New York Jets, seven. And Sunday night football for Baltimore continues after these messages. Beautiful shot of the Inner Harbor in Baltimore. Tonight's aerial coverage being brought to you by Geico. Al Michaels, Chris Collins, with Michelle DeFoyer, M&T Bank Stadium. Start the second quarter, 17-7. The Ravens on top. The Jets have just picked up their first first down. They start the second quarter from their own 33, down by 10. And a hard two yards for Green here up to the 35-yard line. He can still bring it, number 52, 16th season in the league, number one draft choice when the Ravens came here in 1996. 11 Pro Bowls, two times defensive player of the year, and I think more than anything else, and maybe you'd agree, the emotion that he brings to the practice field and to every single game is what makes his defense different. And to the fans, too, he can really get them stirred up. Second and eight. Sanchez throws and the pass is behind Dustin Keller. The security blanket is third down and eight. Ray Lewis just missed a sack on that one and forced Sanchez to throw it a little earlier than he wanted to. I'm sorry, Ray Lewis is up there on the line of scrimmage on this one and does a little loop around the other way and gets a good shot. Third down and eight. That means... Tomlinson comes into the game. Sanchez one out of four for eight yards. They've got Suggs on this side. Oh, ball loose again, and the Ravens have it at the 23-yard line. Paul Kruger comes up with the fumble recovery. Lee. The ball is hard and a little high and to the right. Let's see if Sanchez ever really saw it. Really, it, it's not a horrible snap. It maybe just surprised him how hard it came back and Sanchez just couldn't control it. He looks a little unsettled right now. This Ravens defense starting to take its toll. And it's been a storyline since the beginning of the game. The man in the middle. Here's Ricky Williams now at running back from the 23-yard line. Off the hard play fake. And then he passes incomplete intended for 
Ed Dixon has been on the receiving end of three of Flacco's throws tonight. That's one of the things that Joe Flacco really likes that they brought in is the fact that they can run some of those naked bootlegs out there that this stretch play if you think of Mike Shanahan's offenses and what they used to do uh, running the ball off tackle and then bringing the quarterback back around the other way you know this is Joe Flacco is a lot more mobile than people think he is his ability to get outside is sort of transform this offense a little bit this year. You know, Sanchez and Baxter need another conference. And working his way through the middle is Ricky Williams down to the 17 yard line tackled there by Mohammed Wilkerson the number one draft choice of the Jets. <laughs> well, not only a rookie free agent in Baxter but a guy who wasn't even in camp he was in San Diego's camp they liked him didn't have room for him though and waved him and the Jets picked them up. And if there's one thing offensive linemen hate is having the camera on them that's usually yeah. not a good sign. It's normally accompanied by audio that's just holding number 64. <laughs> Third and six. And Flacco gets almost wrestled to the ground by Calvin Pace, but was able to get the ball away. And the Jets are looking for a, a grounding call. Now, Cal now, Calvin Pace, watch the hands on this one as he comes off the edge and gets Michael Orr's hands off of him. You see how far forward Orr is. And Flacco really kind of gave it the hook shot out there to Ricky Williams to avoid the penalty. Right. So now Cundiff for what will be a 38 yard attempt. Morgan Cox to snap it, Sam Cook to hold it. And that one is just inside the right upright. So the fumble leads to three more, and the Raven lead is 20 to 7. This is Sunday night. Ray Lewis and that Raven defense, the Jets have been limited to 11 total yards. The Ravens with 169. The only Jets scoring on the 107 yard return of the kickoff on McKnight. Now we'll see about Baxter. Slauson had been working with Sanchez on the sideline. They may make a change there. We'll see when they get the ball, which they will in a moment with McKnight back. And he hopes to be able to return a kick by Cundiff, but he won't be able to. That's Cundiff's second straight touchback. And here comes Slauson. Baxter will stay on the sidelines, and Vladimir Dukas will come in and take Slauson's spot at left guard. Yeah, and this Jets offense now has to do something. I mean, they have just simply been overwhelmed. Their quarterback looks completely unsettled. Now they're down to their third center. They simply cannot allow this next drive to go three and out. They have to come up with something here. And I'm thinking probably some short, quick passes. These corners are vulnerable if he can get time to throw. If he can get time. The key if. And there's that short drop. Burris makes the catch, and Plaxico will pick up a first down before he gets ridden out of bounds at the 32 yard line by Carrie Williams, and there's a flag. Seven penalties in the game so far, five on Baltimore. Personal foul, face mask, offense number 17. 15 yards penalty, go first down. And that negates that. Well, as a receiver, you're allowed to put your hand on the face mask and stiff arm. I think they're going to say that he hooked it and yeah. grabbed it there, and that's the difference. He just right. pulls it down at that point, and now he's trying to rip his helmet off. And finally, the Jets make a play, 
and still lose yardage on it. And that makes it a first and 14 as it comes back from the spot to the 16-yard line. The good news was, though, that Slauson more than held his own that time in there. Green out to the 20-yard line. Second down and 10 for the Jets. One thing about Sanchez, last year in his first five games, Sanchez did not turn the ball over once. This year, in three games plus a quarter and a couple of minutes, seven turnovers, four picks, three fumbles. Well, it's one of the things when you're trying to let your quarterback become a passer, you're going to pay the price with sacks and mistakes and fumbles and the Jets a little out of their character from the couple of years from Rex Ryan. Second and ten. And that pass is incomplete, intended for Burris. Williams again covering on the play. Third down and ten now for the Jets. Tell you what, Kerry Williams won that battle at the line of scrimmage. He just jammed the heck out of Plaxico Burris, who's a big, strong guy. Watch this battle right out here. Crazy. I got one for you. Face pass to my face. <laughs> Crowd rising, third down and ten. And he gets it away to Holmes, and Holmes reaching out, trying to pick up the first down with forward progress. He signals he's got a first, but we'll see where the referee or the officials spot the ball. Take a look and see whether or not Santonio maintained possession of this ball. Right. They're going to rule it incomplete is what they're going to do, so it doesn't even matter. Holding it, holding it, holding it, hits the ground, and uses the ground to secure it. So after initially saying it was complete, the other official comes in and overrules it, and it's incomplete. Yeah, the ball was never really controlled that time by Holmes, and so when it hit the ground and moved again, incomplete. T.J. Conley to punt. Quan Williams ready to run it back and it's a very bad kick with another flag down but it takes a really good bounce for the Jets and at least goes all the way down to the 37 yard line yet Ed Reed coming in that time to try to block it and the flag is back where the kicker stood holding on the kicking team number wow. The foul will be enforced at the dead ball spot. Ten yards, first down, timeout. Eleven and a half left in the half. Twenty to seven, Ravens. Home of the Ravens, and we ain't kidding. Meanwhile, very interesting on that last play. Watch Mike Carey, the referee, and what he's looking at and what he will miss here in terms of Ed Reed running into the kicker. And no question the hold. You can see that there. But now Ed Reed is going to hit the plant leg of the punter, which should have been a 15-yard at the very least offset because it's not running into the kicker when you hit that plant leg. It's the 15-yard variety. And Reed got up and knew that he got away with one at the end of the play. And it was as simple as Mike Carey saw the hold. His focus was that way, and they did not see the other side of it. Now from the 47 with Ricky Williams in the game. Flacco has a ton of time and then throws incomplete over the middle. Intended for the tight end Ed Dixon. Second down and 10 for the Ravens. Yeah, and the interesting part of that, and we're going to double check this ruling, but I think there's a rule that if there's a personal foul and any other foul that it's possible that offset could have actually gone the Jets way and that may have ended up being a first down. We'll double check that. Second down and 10 with the ball at the 47 yard line. Empty the backfield, send Rice into the pattern. And the pass underneath, incomplete intended for Dixon. Let's check in with Michelle. 
Well, Brian Thomas uh, is now officially out with that ankle. Westerman will be in for him. So we've had some injuries on this sideline, uh, Al. And Westerman, a third-year linebacker out of Rutgers. Teammate of Ray Rice in New Jersey. Third down and 10 now with the ball at the 47-yard line. And Flacco floating one, and it is caught. And going to the ground, but incomplete. Ed Dixon couldn't control it all the way through the ground. Looked like he'd made the catch. Through a changeup, beautiful floating pass. Strickland with the coverage, but just couldn't control it all the way through the catch. Nope, it's the ground. I don't know how Dixon dropped that one. That was like a yeah. feather coming out of the sky there. What a great throw by Joe Flacco, right dead on the money. Now Sam Cook to punt. Jeremy Curley sets up at the 10 to run it back. High kick, fair catch, called for. And Curley makes it at the 17-yard line with 11 minutes to go. 11 on 9 and a half. Ravens by 13 over the Jets. So the Jets start this drive from the 18-yard line. The Jets holding on that last series and get the ball back without any further damage. From the 18 now, you got Slauson. Taking over as the center, his second series. And that pass is caught. Nine-yard gain, Lewis popping the receiver, Keller. Just to clarify one other thing, we saw what would have been running into or roughing the roughing. kicker that was missed. No matter what the call would have been, running into or roughing, it would have been offsetting. The penalties would have offset and they would have replayed the down like nothing had happened. Right, but once you hit that plant leg, not the kicking leg, that's when the 15 yard variety comes into play. Regardless, it's just an offsetting situation. And so they missed the call, but really no damage as it turns out to the Jets. Ultimately, is Sean Green. It's taken down by Haloti Mata. Well, I tell you what, there aren't many athletes on the planet could make this move. Lodi Nada right out here. Watch this. Working against a good one, and Brandon Moore just swims him and then has the speed to go run it down from the backside. The guy's pretty amazing. Signed the big deals, $60 million, and well deserved. Within the past couple of weeks, wanting to make sure they retain them. It's third down and three. Play clock ticking all the way down to two, one. They just do get it off. And Sanchez is going to try to pick up the first down on the ground and does. Remember, he had a broken nose last week in the game at Oakland, stayed in the game. What they called a minor nose break, which is when somebody else's nose gets broken. <laughs> I'll tell you, Sanchez better be worried about breaking other things. This offensive line wasn't even ready for that snap. Sanchez obviously because the play clock was running down but the guys were looking around at the line of scrimmage and got surprised by the snap but he I guess he ends up picking up that first down. From the 28 green gain of one second to nine. Well, they're going to at least try it in the middle. They're trying to establish. And one of the problems, if you get too intimidated running into the middle of the field, all of a sudden you're facing all kinds of pressure coming from the outside. So occasionally the Jets are going to have to try and just take a shot in there. But I'm not sure they're going to have to look for volunteers as running back to run that play. Sanchez wearing that visor to protect it. Broken nose from last Sunday. Second down and nine from the 29-yard line. Look out. Whacked again. They are for the moment going to call that a fumble created by Nada. Johnson goes into the end zone. And again, a, a scoring play. You can't challenge this. 
So they'll take a look at it upstairs. Was his arm coming forward or not? Ooh. That's close. There, that's that's as close as it gets. There is a little forward movement to get that ball up, but right. was it moving out of his hand before that happened? Oh boy, is that close. They'll review it upstairs. There's no question. They'll tell Carrie to come on over to the hood and check this out. I'm going to tell you what, though. The offensive line play for the Jets tonight is a total train wreck so far. Under review. Won't even venture a guess because this is about as close as it can get. The contact is made as the arm starts to come forward. Carrie has taken a look and here's the decision. After review, the quarterback's came, hand came forward with an empty hand. The ruling on the field is confirmed. The score is good. The crowd misread what Mike was saying. The empty hand means that the, the ruling on the field would be confirmed. Basically being there was a fumble on the play. Did Co it absolutely. Or with the ball in his hand. Right. You can see it start to come up and out. Contact there. Right. And the ball is sort of going upwards. It is close. I mean. On well, the anniversary of the tuck rule, why not have wacky plays of this ilk? So he wasn't trying to tuck that baby away. Trying to get it off. And Rex Ryan calls a Before the snap. timeout. Timeout, New York, their first. Rex wants to discuss that a little more, I think. He wants to vent. I don't think you can get Mike Carey to go back under the hood a second time. I don't know exactly. He maybe he just wants to scream at him a little bit. Maybe he should scream at his offensive line first. Right. Was, oh. There was Michelle trying to eavesdrop. Remember the ruling the ruling on the field was a touchdown and you could see what Rex just said he goes it's a pass. Now Sanchez continues to plead the case but this is going to be to no avail in real time we'll take a, a peek at it since we've looked at it several different ways in slow motion real time right on the edge there's no question he's loading up he's ready to go and then here comes nada to make contact with the tricep then you have the throwing motion with the empty hand And Johnson recovers it and takes it in for the touchdown. And now the extra point by Cundiff. And with 8-11 to go in the first half, the Baltimore Ravens have taken a 20-point lead. Now with two defensive touchdowns. And it has been mistakes by this offensive line. You're going to see these two guys here start in on Haloti Nada. Both of them make contact, both release, and I think Vladimir DeCoste had to. He saw the blitzer coming inside, but DeBrickashaw Ferguson really had nobody to block, and Haloti Nada with helmet first contact on the quarterback, which my understanding is that's not supposed to happen. You know, Chris, the irony of this, too, is when the season starts, the Jets have one of the best offensive lines in football the ground and pound you got two guys playing on that front perennial pro bowlers in Ferguson and Mangold of course you still have the Brickashaw in there but he can't do it alone because Mark Brunel was the backup quarterback at the age of 41 and Mangold and they can only hope that Mangold is ready to go Force a smile there, whatever. Next week they go to Foxborough. So they're in the middle of a 
three game trip which is turning out to be a monster they lose in Oakland in a game in which they're favored come here and then get the pass next week and this kick is taken at the back of the end zone and down there by McKnight Sunday Night Football from Baltimore brought to you by Papa John's the official pizza sponsor of the NFL by Nissan innovation for today innovation for tomorrow innovation for all by Geico 15 minutes can save you 15% on car insurance and by Sprint all football no limits only from Sprint Tuesday a little not a Ray Rice some of the Ravens players who visited Sandy Mount Elementary School part of the NFL's play 60 campaign to encourage kids to be active for 60 minutes a day. He could barely get his feet inside those little squares. <laughs> now oh, the Jets. Boy. Penalty Four filled four game. Fifth penalty against the Jets. Five against Baltimore. All kinds of reviews. Sloppy and messy, but all working in the Ravens' favor. If I'm Nick Mangold, I'm going to go ask for a raise without him in there, especially against this complex defense. They have simply come unglued tonight. First and 15, Sean Green straight ahead. Green's carried the ball. Six times tonight for 13 yards. Yeah, and that's not uh, ground or pound there. No. And this is, you know, and we talked about this a little bit in the opener as well. This is a team that went to back to back AFC championship games with a formula run the ball, play defense. They're trying to grow from that and become better throwing the football, but because of the injury to Mangold, it hasn't been as good. Second and 12. And the pass incomplete intended for Santonio Holmes, who's had a number of field days against the Ravens, some of those in Pittsburgh uniforms. Third down and 12. And, and what we're seeing in the secondary now is because they know up front that they can't block the Ravens, these corners are just squatting, playing these short pass plays and so now you almost are forced to try to throw something down the field to get them backed off of it. Third and 12. Pressure again straight up the middle. Sanchez had no shot. Zibikowski the safety making Mark backpedal and just Get it away. Well, and now they're playing games up front with them. Brendan Iambadejo is going to come looping around on a blitz once they distract Slauson, and then Iambadejo comes around the other way. So just the lack of experience inside. You can see they're just getting free runners coming at Mark Sanchez, who may be about to wave the white flag out there. C.J. Conley is another very short kick. Takes a good Jets bounce and dies at the 35 yard line. There was some contact with the punter, it looked like at that time. Bernard Pollard, yep. But I think it was one of those where he was blocked into it. Let's see. I think that's exactly yeah. what they're calling there that he got blocked into it by Rodney Poole. Definitely. So that punt goes 47 yards. With a fortuitous bounce, and the Ravens now start from their own 35 yard line. 7.15 left in the half. And Rice, no place to run. Now, that's not where I would be attacking the Jets, even though you have a good, strong fullback. But these guys up front, man, they just. They just sit here. They're not coming after the quarterback. Their job is to take on that offensive line and they're going to sit. There is just going to be a pile. You want to run. I'd run outside against Jamal Westerman. Try and kick him out with my big fullback Vontae Leach. That'd be the one I'd be going after. Second and 11. Black 
Falco hit as he gets it away and the pass is incomplete. Cromartie back there covering Corey Smith on the play. Pressure put on by Bart Scott, the former Raven, third and 11. You know, Bart Scott seen enough on the other side. He's going to start bringing a little of his own medicine here for Joe Flacco. Comes inside on the stunt. Nice job picking it up by Andre Gerard. Gave him just enough time to get that one off. I tell you, Antonio Cromarty for getting banged around and embarrassed a little bit last week in Oakland is bouncing back and playing pretty well so far on the outside. Third and 11, Flacco has that one intercepted. The break they needed, David Harris inside the five, touchdown Jets. And that is exactly what the doctor ordered for the Jets. Down by 20, Harris with the interception and the touchdown. First career touchdown for David Harris. Well, finally, they tricked Joe Flacco. David Harris is going to come up right here, fake it, and then drop back out of it underneath as the blitz came to the outside. And when Ray Rice stopped on the route, ended up throwing it right to David Harris. What a crazy game this <laughs> is. <laughs> Just when you think it's going to get away from you, the 13 point game as Nick Folk bangs it through. So it's 6 17 to play in the half. It's 27 to 14, Baltimore. Uh, Joe Flacco sees David Harris, and David Harris jumps the route by Ray Rice, and when Rice stopped, that was it, but it was the pressure that came from the outside that time. That's the way that this zone blitz happens. They fake the blitz inside and then they bring it over here and it confused the Ravens just enough. They got some pressure on them there and led to the interception. And for Joe Flacco, you're in the kind of game where you don't lose it on the offensive side. Now, if you run it the rest of the night, you're probably going to walk away with this one. Now explain something else to me here. Joe McKnight is a running back and we see we saw him run back from 107 yards he's playing defense on that play and he's the guy that gets the flack up well, sometimes they want the speediest guy they know they're in trouble so who's the fastest guy coming off the edge you don't have to be able to play defensive back and cover you just have to run that 40 yard dash that we saw with ed reed they had to do a double take for a second we're going wait a minute what's what side of the ball are we on here here comes McKnight. He forces the issue. Harris runs it in. 27-14. Surprised we didn't see Rex Ryan blitzing on that one. It's a good pickup, though. I didn't even realize that was McKnight. Here's Folk to kick off. And from the one-yard line, Laquan Williams comes into his own man. Out to the 20-yard line. NBC's new show starring Whitney Cummings, one of the season's best new comedies. You'll see it Thursday right after The Office on NBC. Inner Harbor, Baltimore. There's Joe McKnight out there. Believe me, he's not going to cover anybody. They're just going to send him as fast as they can. And he, just, he didn't want to get a roughing the passer penalty. He just kind of gave him a tag. Here comes McKnight peeling back on the block. That's pretty good. Some play. Joe McKnight does everything on Sunday night. But pretty soon he'll be snapping the ball to Sanchez from the 20 yard line on first down. Ray Rice up to the 22, tackled by Mike DeVito. <laughs> Baxter may get another shot here. Well, in baseball, once you've. Uh, been relieved you can't go back in the game of football I guess you can yep. so I, I think what's happening to him on that last series they just got confused so many times they're going well at least if we just change one guy maybe we can handle it if we can just get it solidified and really they took him out of the game because of the of the fumbled snap but I didn't really think that was his fault it was a little high but not that high well, it was a cumulative effect maybe they just needed to take a, a rest second and eight and that pass is tipped and almost picked off. Ed Dixon couldn't handle it. Dixon's caught three tonight. Third and eight. Game being played in fits and starts. Well, here's the one thing that 
Westerman does well. He does get after the quarterback, makes a nice little swim move, and Michael Orr may have reached out and tripped him on that one. They give Flacco just enough time, but a little surprised to see the Ravens throwing it quite as much as they are with the lead that they had and the defense that they have. Or of blind side. Fame, third down and eight. Flacco. Same blitz. Down he goes at the 13-yard line. So all of a sudden the momentum shifts to the guys in white. Poole and Smith come in to knock him to the ground. Same exact blitz. This time it's the nose tackle is going to drop out, and all these guys are going to come off the edge. And Joe Flacco just unable to find anybody down the field. And the Jets have finally hit on something now. This crowd has been still the Sam Cook. Gets ready to punt. Curley avoids the first man at the 40 yard line and takes the ball into Raven territory to the 47 yard line with 4.41 to play in the half. Check out the all new NFL mobile apps and follow the game wherever you are while on the go. NFL.com slash mobile. Want to take a deep breath? Yeah. This is nuts. This is We've had crazy. some crazy games so far this year on Sunday night. And here comes the relief guy gets to relieve the next guy. So Baxter comes back in. Let's see if it works this time. From the 47. Holmes comes in motion to the inside. And the handoff goes to the fullback. And that's John Conner who picks up. A first down. Connor takes it inside the 35 for a gain of 13 yards. Well, one of the things that the Jets wanted to do, they felt like that sometimes Ray Lewis, with some misdirection, can get out of step. And so they go unbalanced line here and bring John Connor back the other way. And Ray Lewis just overran that. Ravens jump. Green tackle to the line of scrimmage. You had Suggs coming across the line. Offside. Defense number 55. Five yard penalty. First down, five yards to go. Suggs, Ravens all time sack leader, 72 and a half. Jumping the gun. And that's a great matchup over there on that side. I've been watching a little bit tonight against the Brickishaw Ferguson. Ferguson probably the best pure pass blocking offensive left tackle in the game and Suggs we know him from Sunday night he's a monster especially in prime time first and five well, two, two Jets and two Ravens are right there Mason Burris Mason the former Raven and now you got all this going on with Hunter getting involved. Last guy the Jets can afford to lose is any offensive lineman right now. Really a bizarre looking route combination. When Derek Mason comes up and wiggles to the outside. He's right next to Plexico Burris. Either one of them could have caught it. You know, and, and right now the Ravens are forcing him to shrink down. I don't think Plexico even knew what it was. Maybe an audible, but he had been really confused tonight. Second and five, and now there's Green, and Green's going to lose the ball. There's a flag. <laughs> Got it back. Apparently he was able to recover his own fumble from what we can tell from here. And you saw another flag come in. Ray Lewis was the man who forced the fumble. But they are going to some of those little cutback runs now and at least have found something. Holding offense number 68. 10 yards coming is still seven out. That's Matt Slauson. Well, you know, fool me once here in uh, that old saying. Here we go, the misdirection again, but this time Ray Lewis on it. And gets that ball out. Now the ball moves back to the 39-yard line. It'll be second down and 15. Tomlin 
Jackson in the game. Keller in motion. Sanchez throws, hits Holmes. Holmes spinning his way to the 16-yard line. Antonio Holmes, the Raven killer through the years. A gain of 23. That's the best this offensive line has done all night. It was calm, polished, and they got it done. Here comes Lewis going to loop around on this stunt. Come off, pick it up beautifully, give Sanchez time. And then Sanchez throws in the pass incomplete intended for Burris. Covered by Carey Williams. Second and ten with two and a half to go in the half. It was interesting talking to some of the Ravens out there. We asked them, who do you consider to be the top threat? And they said, Santonio San Holmes. He's the guy that has beaten the Ravens so many times in the past, whether with the Jets or with the Steelers. And so now maybe Sanchez tries to find him. And normally with high drama. Yeah. Second and ten. And his movement on the left side. That's Ferguson, of all people, the one guy Charles you can Martin, count on. Offense number 60, five yard penalty. Eight penalties for 64 yards against the Jets. See if Terrell Suggs gives him a little flinch here to get him to jump. There you go. That's that little flinch. And Ferguson moved. Second down, 15. Picked up the blitz nicely in the pass. It's Keller. Does he make the catch? He does not. Ray Lewis was right there. Third down. Well, LT is doing his job in the backfield. Watch him pick up the blitz here. Offensive linemen get theirs. LT, who has basically become not the every down back, but the third down back in part because he can block like that as well. Third down, 15. Keller and Tomlinson flanking Sanchez. Antonio Holmes out here on Danny Gore. Play clock all the way down to one. Sanchez to the end zone and nobody home. Holmes the intended receiver. Danny Gore covering on the play fourth down and Folk will come in to try to make it the 27 to 17 game. Now Gore was having none of it. San Antonio Holmes with the double move but Gore never blinked. Folk perfect this season had the game winner. On opening night against Dallas in the thrilling Jets comeback. 40 yard attempt. Brunel to hold it. And he just does get it down. Had trouble with the hold at first, but Mark puts it down and Folk bangs it through, and that makes it a 10 point game 27 to 17. Really nice job by Nick Folk of just concentrating on the kick. As the kicker, you've got to go through your motion and trust that that ball is going to get down. But you called it exactly right. Brunel bobbled it a bit, but Nick Folk never flinched and managed to get it through. That's a tough one. A lot Ooh, of times, boy. those kickers, you know, that's like sure. somebody yelling in your backswing. You can't help but give it a little hesitation. Not you, of course. You're <laughs> solid. Yeah, what does it matter? <laughs> Your wood keys and everything. <laughs> Works only one day, right? <laughs> Unbelievably, this is a game again. Ten-point game. I mean. I, you know, it, it, but it really took a mistake on the part of the Ravens offense to make it so. We've had three defensive touchdowns and a kickoff return for a touchdown. Again, the kickoff moved to the 35 this year, so about half the kicks this season have been touchbacks. But what you're seeing is a lot of runbacks from deep in the end zone, and we saw one tonight. And folks kick, and that one's going to go out of bounds. 
before it reaches the goal line. So that's the last thing in the world that a kicker wants to do. Go back to the defensive touchdown. You like all these defensive plays? Here you go. Ed Reed with the first one on a sack fumble that was a little close. Not close enough. Touchdown, Ravens. Here you come. Elodi Nada off the edge. Get Sanchez ball out for the touchdown by Jared Johnson. And then finally, David Harris fools Joe Flacco and Ray Rice. He stops, and David Harris does it before he gets to the end zone. And then Falk kicks it out of bounds, and that means that Baltimore takes over at the 40 yard line. Ravens have one timeout plus the two minute warning. Flacco starts with an incomplete pass intended for Anquan Bolden. Third game in the history of the league with four return touchdowns in the first half. Last time it was done in 86. Kansas City against San Diego and before that Green Bay and Tampa Bay back in 83. Hey, we still have two minutes and nine seconds. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. We had done. I think the Jets defense, uh, they have the advantage. The defense is on the field now. Baltimore minus three in yardage in the quarter. Maybe coming with that same edge blitz. Second and ten. Here's Rice. And Rice doesn't go very far, which is going to make it third down and long as we come to the two-minute warning. Two minutes left in a wacko first half. Baltimore by 10. Coming up, the Toyota Halftime Show, Aaron Rodgers and Devin Hester made history today. Bob and the gang will be telling you about it. San Francisco overcomes a big deficit to beat Philly. Detroit knocks off Dallas. It's been a crazy day to have a halftime show with Bob and the gang coming right up. Third down and nine now. Two minutes. One timeout for Baltimore. Flacco throws. Oh, and that's broken up. Broken up by the ex-Raven. Jim Leonard. Fourth down. I tell you, Jim Leonard had a chance for this one. I, I just have to be wondering what Ray Lewis is thinking. Here he had this huge lead. Their defense is just dismantling the Jets' offense, and the Ravens continue to throw the ball with that big lead, and now the offensive mistakes have really played the Jets back into the game. Right, meanwhile, Flacco is 8 for 27. Irvin's going to let the punt go, and... Do you stay out of the end zone? Officials checking with each other. Just to make sure. Remember, if, if, if you're in the end zone, then the ball is in the end zone. This is going to be very close. They get a very good break at first. Well, it's at least touched there, so right. they shouldn't mark it back on the half-inch line. And I don't think his foot crossed the line. No. But it should be marked where it was initially touched. That sounds completely the mode, which is possible. I would think it would be... Once that ball is touched, you shouldn't get the benefit. Well, it never, it never goes into the end zone. And his foot Even, didn't go in the end zone either, right. which is the key. Right. And they're going to mark the ball inside the one-yard line. And that's where the Jets will try to avoid a safety. That's the key right now. Ooh, and they give it to the fullback, the first man through Connor, who buys them a yard. Yeah, it a doesn't, big yard. It doesn't sound like much. But the difference between being on the one and a half yard line where it was initially touched, which is where it should have been marked, and on the one inch line is significant. Right there is where maybe even the two is where that ball should have been marked. But instead it kept on rolling. He's, one official must have thought that no contact was made. I, I assume that's what he thought because it should be at the two yard line. But the official, the official took a look at it and didn't see any contact made by the first guy in. Is Sean Green that takes the ball out to the 10-yard line. And the Jets would just like to end this half right now down by 10 the way things were going earlier. Yeah, and maybe just the end of the half here, getting back to their running game a little bit might actually do them some good because now down just 10, you can play football the way you want to play football, and you don't have to worry about 
Terrell Suggs and these guys getting after him the way that they did. They need this first down. Third and one. And again, they give it to Connor, and that should move the chains and negate any Baltimore opportunity to get the ball back. They do have one timeout. And again, they should have taken the ball at the two-yard line, but the official apparently didn't see the initial contact. Turns out to be of no consequence. Four teams have won after trailing by 20 or more points in the NFL this season. Hello, Detroit. Hello, Buffalo. <laughs> Who knows? The Jets can only hope. Jets will get the second half kickoff. Wacky and wild first half with the Toyota Halftime Show on the other side of the break. Don't wait for tomorrow. Tonight is all we got. I need your best tonight. Let's go, man. One, two, three. Woo! This is our time. How about Ed Reed, the all-pro safety A hundred seven yards. How much does Joe McKnight love Sunday night football? Oh boy! Look out! Whacked again. The offensive line is a total train wreck. Intercepted. The break they needed. Touchdown, Jets! And so, after a very long first half, we start the second half. M&T Bank Stadium, Baltimore, Maryland. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle Tafoya. The Jets will get the ball. Looked like they were going to be left for dead with their offensive line a mess and one of the starting linebackers going out. And the next thing you know, they're right back in the game. Defense does it. Interception return for a touchdown. And now you've got Cundiff's kick resulting in a touchback and the Jets start at the 20 and we go to Michelle Tafoya. Michelle. I just spoke with Rex Ryan, a very resolute Rex Ryan. He's going to keep rookie Colin Baxter in at center. He said, look, we took their best shot there in the first half. We're still standing. We made enough mistakes. We can't really survive any more of those. As for Joe McKnight, the running back, putting him in on defense, he's done it before. He said he has good cover skills. He can blitz. They'll also drop him now. So that's the, the idea there. Yeah, that was a great play, Michelle, and the play that led to the interception. And the return for a touchdown, and the Jets right now down by 10, start the third quarter from the 20-yard line. And as Michelle said, Baxter staying in. Had a rough stretch in the first quarter, had to take him out for a couple of series, and now back in. From the 20. And Green will go absolutely nowhere. He gets planted by Ray Lewis. Boy, that was so play by Ray Lewis. The Jets bring in an extra offensive lineman here, but Lewis is just going to come right off the edge of that and leave Sean Green with nowhere to go. Ray Lewis got misdirected on one play tonight, and since then he has been a headache for everybody. Don't tell Ray Lewis the tackling's become a lost star. Huh? That's pretty good. Second and ten. Swatted away by McLean. Jimmy McLean banging it away. It'll be third down. Now they're trying to cut on the outside, but nobody's there for McLean here. And I tell you, that was relatively close. The Jets are shrinking their offense. They're so afraid to drop back and throw the ball. They're trying all these little quick screens and quick moves. At some point on an early down, you've got to take a shot. You have to get these guys to back off because Chuck Pacano's uh, defense has just been overwhelming. Coach the defensive backs last couple of years. Moving into the coordinated position this season. Third down, and that pass is caught by Burris, who gets position on the corner on Carrie Williams and makes the catch for a first down. Boy, that time they got it done up front. Baxter is just going to take one of these two, and then LaDainian Tomlinson ends up with the other. So they're starting to make proper decisions now for the Jets and for Mark Sanchez. Throwing a pass and not being on his back is a huge momentum shift. Four 
Marsh's movement on the interior. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty is still first down. Unbelievable Wayne amount Hunter. of mistakes. Yep. They see Ed Reed on the end of the line of scrimmage, and so you heard Mark Sanchez go kill, kill, kill. They probably had a pass play called and a run play as well, so they cancel the pass when they see Ed Reed up here on the line of scrimmage. So here goes the kill, 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 but it's been more the play of the offensive line that's been accomplishing that. Eight penalties on the Jets, 14 total in the game. First and 15 now. And that's caught by Holmes. And Williams covering him. Santonio Holmes with so much success against the Ravens, but uh, there's one signature play for the rest of his career forever. It's the catch in the Super Bowl to beat Arizona in Tampa in January or February of 2009. The captain of the Jets this year, and how thrilled was he? He said, I was never the captain even in my JV basketball team. When Rex Ryan told him he was the captain, it was one of the happiest moments of his life. Second and four. Tomlinson, uh-uh-uh. Corey Redding breaks through over the right side of the Jets' offensive line to stop him in his tracks and make it third down and eight. I've seen more free runners tonight than I think I've ever seen over here coming through on the back side. And I'm not exactly sure who Wayne Hunter thought he was going to block, but somebody as big as... Corey Redding would have been a pretty good option. You would think. Third and eight. And that'll be caught by Mason, but he can't get the first down. Derek Mason, and he gets into it with one of his ex-teammates here, but Paul Kruger. Mason started his career at Tennessee, then came here. He's caught 60 or more passes for 11 straight years, and now he wants he wants to further it, which is not a very good idea at this particular point. Yeah, and Derek Mason was known, even when he was with the Ravens, for being a little chippy. He had a little confrontation with Flacco. There we go. Watch Baxter this time. He's going to pick up the blitz. That's a nice job. There you go. They get the protection. But it was the dropping in that time that ended up running underneath and making the play, Paul Kruger. 15th year in the league for him. That's Ed Reed who drops back to field this kick. Calls for the fair catch at first. And then he, since he called for the fair catch, the official said, oh, the minute you pick it up, it's dead right there. He called for the fair catch, tried to, in effect, wave it off. It was given the moment the ball is recovered. That is first correct. Down, Timeout. 11.09 left in the third. Baltimore by 10. Rex Ryan, he was here for 10 years, and the last four were spent as the defensive coordinator. 64 games. You look at those numbers, and in his two seasons plus as the Jets head coach, and of course the uh, major domo of the defense over there, how remarkably similar those numbers are. And that defense really clamped down on Flacco. Joe is 0 for his last 10. They start on the ground here with Rice picking up a couple. Tackled by Westerman taking the spot of the injured Brian Thomas. Flacco, 142 yards passing in the first quarter and 0 for 10. So he is in the game 8 for 27. And Sanchez is 7 for 19, and that's about as ugly as quarterback's numbers can get. And what's not on there is the touchdown they gave the Jets. So the one interception was seven points the other way. Part of those 10 inside handoff to Rice. And Rice is straight up on his way ahead for a first down and 24-yard line. Let's check in with Michelle. Al, I also spoke with John Harbaugh at halftime. He was very unhappy with his offense's performance in that second quarter. I asked him about continuing to throw the ball, even though they had a big league. He said, lead. He said, we are not going into a shell. We're going to continue to attack, whether that's running or throwing the ball. We're not going into a shell, Al. Even with a, thank you, Michelle, even with a 20-point lead, Cam Cameron, the offensive coordinator, when he was the head coach at Indiana in the late 90s, hired Harbaugh on his staff there. Flacco 
Then as he throws and staying right with him was Calvin Pace got on his face at the end. Forces the incompletion second and ten. Now that's the way they're running that naked bootleg now with Vonte Leach coming back around in protection. He wasn't able to get in front of Pace and kind of grabbed a hold of him. They got away with it. Being outside the pocket, no intentional grounding there. Second down and ten. 44 degrees now in Baltimore. Indian Summer will be here soon, we hope. Rice again on the inside here. Muhammad Wilkerson makes the tackle, setting up third and nine. Now Muhammad Wilkerson playing with a bit of a banged up shoulder, but this is a nice looking play here. They are really excited about the possibilities of him. He's done well against the run, still working on some of those NFL level pass moves. Ray Rice, usually that jump cut beats most people and actually did get away from Wilkerson. They were just there to clean it up. Third and nine, Flacco stepping up, and then he loses the ball, swatted out from behind and recovered by the Jets. Aaron Maben just recently re-signed by the Jets, forced the fumble, and Marcus Dixon comes up with it. The amazing thing is, I think Joe Flacco actually turned around and looked at Maben, who's going to come off the edge right here. Good blocking up front against him. Watch Flacco and see if he turns around and sees Maben and still ends up losing the ball. But here we go again with the Ravens. The more they throw it, the more bad things happen. And I've got it. I know the personality of this Ravens defense. They have to be out there saying, what are you guys doing? Just let us play with this 10-point lead. Second turnover, Sanchez in business at the 27, off play action, has that one intercepted! Picked off by Lordarius Webb, and they give it right back to the Ravens. Whoever's playing defense has the best chance of scoring in this crazy game. Terrell Suggs made an inside move, and that was that for Mark Sanchez. Four defensive returns and a kick return for touchdowns tonight. Suggs goes hard inside. Sanchez has to rush it, doesn't see it. And I tell you, these are two great defensive teams, but this is insanity. I mean, if the offenses never take the field, you'd end up having a better chance to win this game. Four turnovers by the Jets. They've led to 24 points. That's a 73-yard return. 8.49 left in the third. And Baltimore has doubled up the Jets. 34-17. Oh, Heading to Georgia. Next Sunday night, Aaron Rodgers and the unbeaten Packers heading to Atlanta, taking on Matt Ryan. And the Falcons football night in America begins at 7 o'clock Eastern and 4 Pacific. Next Sunday night, Packers, Falcons. Four jet turnovers. And that was a killer right there with the Jets in business. And now down by 17 again, a three-possession lead. And another touchback. Webb to the house. So many mistakes. That one by Mark Sanchez. No question about it. Pre-snap. When you see Ed Reed here, you know there's a chance this corner can roll down. I think because of the pressure, he didn't have a chance to take a real good look at it. He gave up the touchdown. Now here, with the defender outside, you've got an issue coming down inside, too. Back live now on first down. They start with Tomlinson, OT, into the beginning of the series for a gain of one. Let's go to the second mistake by Matthew Mulligan. When you get a blitzer out here and they come all the time off the hedge, 
you know that Terrell Suggs has got to go inside. He's not going to go outside. So you have to protect the inside edge. And that time, Matthew Mulligan doesn't pick up on it. And it led directly to the interception. And unfortunately, he doesn't get a mulligan. Second and nine for the 21. And to the outside and too high intended for Holmes. Covered by Webb. Well, it's Sunday night, so it's history night. Most in one game, five return touchdowns, most in one game in NFL history. Four defensive returns and a 107 yard kickoff return. And we still have 23 minutes and 11 seconds in regulation. Give Chuck Pagano a little credit. He had the plan. And it's been delivered perfectly. Third and nine. And Sanchez able to throw and convert on third and long to Mason. And Mason who's only averaging about seven yards per reception this season turns in a big one here of 30 yards. Well, when you get a pump returner type on the outside sometimes you just want to create a little space for him and here the Ravens obviously with a lead backing off a bit. Kerry Williams unable to get there. Derek Mason is still wanting to fight. They came with that same sort of blitz. Watch LT trying to get out on the route and really kind of got tackled on the play. Broke away from a lead tackle and turned it into a big game to the 49 of the Ravens. You give the ball now to Sean Green. And Green, the third year back out of Iowa, who's going to be the feature back this year, but still really trying to get on track. Comes into the game averaging only 3.3. Picks up five here. And it's so hard to know is this because they don't have Nick Mangold that they've sort of gotten away from their running game? and let Mark Sanchez throw the ball more or is this sort of a permanent change for the Jets this season where they're just going to be more active with their passing. Still trying to find their way on second down and five. Green runs out of room at the line of scrimmage. Taking his head. Well, if you're going to get outside of Jared Johnson you're going to be a real man because that guy He's crazy. The more I watch him on film, and he wasn't so crazy this time, but he is just one of those guys <laughs> loves playing the game of football. And usually when you watch him on tape, there's not a play that goes by that he's not pushing or shoving or punching somebody in the face or doing something. He really kind of personifies the spirit of this Ravens defense. Durable has already scored tonight. LT out there on Ray Lewis, I think. Third and eight, and that's deflected at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down. It's Paul Kruger who comes in to knock it away, number 99. And that's the matchup you're hoping for. You get Damian Tomlinson on the outside against the middle linebacker, and you can't get it past the line of scrimmage. This will be Conley's fifth punt. And Reed going over what what's the, what's the rule on that now if I call for a fair catch and then they go well, okay I got it which you did the last time now he calls for a fair catch again and makes this one at the nine yard line Baltimore has it there six and a half left in the period 34 17 hey it's hockey season Thursday on versus Flyers Bruins the Stanley Cup champion Bruins Raising the banner, then the second half of the doubleheader, Penguins and Canucks. NHL faceoff Thursday on Versus. From the nine yard line, this is Ricky Williams who starts this drive with a six yard run over the right side. And well, the animus continues. And Bart Scott in the middle of it, no surprise there. Well, there's last week's big star, the sudden star. Last Sunday before the game, he's going to the uh, stadium in St. Louis. On the way to the stadium, excited about my first start, he tweets, I have a good feeling about today. And of course, he would go on to do that in the first quarter, the first three catches of his career, all going for touchdowns. And he would have had, not another one, but before he scored the second touchdown, he was free in the end zone and Flacco overthrew him. 
this is Williams who's going to fight for that first down but come up about a yard shot. You know the amazing thing about uh, Tory is that here's a kid that at age seven was basically the parent for his younger sibling. His mom had a couple of jobs worked odd hours so he had to get all the kids out of bed and feed them breakfast bathe them at night put them back to bed. They called him the microwave king as a kid because he would pull a chair over and pop that stuff in the microwave and feed everybody and then go off to second grade. Winds up going to the University of Maryland. It's drafted in the second round and here's Williams busting it to the 25. His story was so good when they were drafting Smith or thinking about it. John Harbaugh is in the draft room and he's reading a story in the Washington Post about the travails of growing up and his mom getting in trouble with the law and the whole the whole nine yards and 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 John says I'm tearing up I'm reading this story we're about to draft this kid and I'm crying yeah, and here's a kid that's never smoked never had a drink of alcohol in his life and is just one of the great people in the game right now everybody I think was pretty happy that he had the kind of day he did a week ago and that ram secondary was crying yeah. <laughs> last Sunday on first down now rice back in the game and rice takes the ball out to the 30 yard line. Well, Vontae Leach, this is his time to shine right now. They're trying to milk this clock a little bit. I think Ray Lewis is calling the plays at this point. I haven't seen a pass play yet. And they really don't need to with the way they're dominating on defense. And I'll tell you, they can do a little ground and pound of their own. On top of that, their quarterback is 0 for his last 11. Blackwell has not completed a pass since the end of the first quarter. And this is Rice. Chugging ahead and also to chew it up some clock as well. Moving the chains here, first down, Baltimore. This is that outside stretch play that they're getting so good at that Vontae really helped teach him. And Ray Rice is just loving it. He just follows in behind the big guy. Watch Matt Burke's block here on this one. Getting out in front, staying, Cutting them down more and more. The Ravens' offensive line. You see them getting cut blocks on the backside, and when you do that, inevitably, you end up breaking off long runs. Rice again behind the fullback Leach up to the 41-yard line. The Tuatoa makes the tackle. Six plays on this drive, all runs. You know that was one of the things that the Steelers were so upset about. In that opener, so many cut blocks, guys engaged in the backside offensive linemen coming over and cutting at the knees of the other guys. And believe me, when we go back in and do that Raven Steelers game later this year, there are going to be a few uh, fireworks in that one. Well, that's become the rivalry. Second and five. And this is Ricky Williams to the 50 yard line. David Harris makes the tackle. And you're right, I think Ray Lewis is calling these plays. Well, the old guy's taking over the game now. Watch Burke, watch Gerard over here on this side. You're stretching out. Get up on the linebacker, David Harris. Basically throw him in the air. And right now, Ray Rice, Vontae Leach, and this old look offensive line over there on the left side starting to take over this game. And nobody's enjoying it more than John Harbaugh. Seven plays, all runs. And then we're going to see another one. Williams. Game of five. Sunday Night Football brought to you by Verizon, the official wireless service provider of the NFL. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. By BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And by Fast Five, own it on Blu-ray and DVD this Tuesday. Ravens trying to go to three and one. Jets trying to avoid going to two and two. The one thing the Ravens would love to do, obviously, any team, everybody's always talking about winning the division and how important it is. And we can tell you one thing about these two teams. As Rice picks up about four, these two teams over the last three years have played a total of 13 postseason games. And they've won eight. They have not sold one ticket because not one of those games has been a home game. Not one. They've been wild cards. They've been on the road. 
The Jets, of course, have gone to the championship game in the last two years without a home game. And the Packers won the Super Bowl as a wild card last year, too. As number six. Steelers a few years ago, same way. Not the way you want to do it, though, if you can avoid it. This is the first time this game's looked like I thought it was going to look coming in. Encroachment. Defense over the pistol. Five yard penalty. The enforcement results. First down. Well, that's a gift. And the one thing that Rex Ryan did not want to see is anybody running on his defense like they did last week against the Raiders. And Rex has been chewing on referees all night. There's the flinch. And then you have to wonder, was it really a simultaneous reaction by Marshall Yonda, which it has to be for it to be a foul on the defense? Nine accepted penalties against the Jets tonight. Rice. That's going to take us to the end of the quarter. So this drive started back at the nine yard line. Ten plays, all runs, and they chewed up six and a half minutes. And that takes us through three. Going to the fourth in Baltimore. With the score, the Ravens 34, the Jets 17. And Sunday night football continues after these messages. Off return. <laughs> As you can see, 336 return yards tonight. And 369 offensive yards. It is second and eight. This drive of the Ravens with 10 runs and make it 11 here. And the Jets say we've had enough of that. Muhammad Wilkerson saying, not on me, not here. Second and eight. Make a third down and 11. Now, Wilkinson made a little inside move on this one and then comes back outside. And the stretch play just kind of stretched right around him. Pretty good looking talent. They, they really feel like that he's sort of just at the beginning phases of what he's going to be. Long arms, strong, can certainly play the run. We've seen that tonight. They think that he's going to be an outstanding pass rusher. Well, let's see if Flacco can complete his first pass since the first quarter. No, he cannot. Eric Smith covering Ed Dixon on the play. And Flacco with a 17-point lead is 8 out of 29. Yeah, um, so much for becoming the, the passing team again. And that's what you end up with. You know, a bunch of checkdowns against these kinds of defenses. I think a, a wide receivers only a couple of catches in this game tonight. But that's generally what it is and what it wasn't because of all the returns and the mistakes made really by both teams on offense. Sam Cook, this will be his fifth punt. And that one will go into the end zone. Uh oh. Yeah, here we go again. The Wilkerson and I am and it's the Jets and the Ravens. Lots of chatter. Lots of pregame stuff. And in the ultimate, it's Baltimore by 17. This just in. Ed Reed is a great player. I mean, he is a, he's just a terrific player. Ten years in the league. Last year, only played in ten games, had a hip injury. Cost him six, still had eight interceptions. Big play to get him started tonight. Since 33, first player to miss six or more games and lead the NFL in any major cumulative category. Phenomenal. Seven Pro Bowls. Can't miss an eighth unless he gets hurt. And he and Lewis through the years have been the main stage. Now first down, that pass intended for Burris is incomplete. Second down. You know, here's kind of what I thought the Jets would have done a little earlier in the game, which is to spread them out. The Ravens like to leave their linebackers in the game. Ray Lewis never comes out of the game. 
And yet, if you can flank out a Ladanian Tomlinson, a lot of times you get one-on-one -on -one coverage with him out there. But so far, they have just simply been unable to take advantage of it. Second and ten. Pick up the blitz. Pass underneath. That's caught by Keller. We've been holding him in check tonight. Gain of only three here. Third and seven. A lot of future Hall of Famers on the field out there tonight. Ladanian Tomlinson certainly. Ray Lewis, Ed Reed. Some great, great superstars. They'll be playing forever. Terrell Suggs will verge on it. Third and seven. And Sanchez with pressure again. The pass is incomplete. Lewis covering. Fourth down. I think Sanchez has just about had enough. This pressure was getting close to him. And you could see Pernell McPhee, number 90, coming right up the gut, gets around Slauson. And Sanchez kind of slips, I guess, or I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe he's just seen enough for one game. T.J. Conley's punt. Reed out. from the 21-yard line. And Ed brings it back to the 37. What a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for another return touchdown, maybe later. Sunday Night Football brought to you by SAP, the best run better with SAP. By the highly intelligent new Audi A6. Audi, truth and engineering. By GE, imagination at work. And by Corona Extra, inviting you to find your beach. Clock tower here in Baltimore. Clock ticking on the Jets right now who are down by 17 and the Ravens have the ball at the 37 yard line and this is Williams. Hey, you look at the quarterback comparison and who would figure this I mean both guys had big big days last week. And there they are compositely 17 of 55. Sanchez with three fumbles. In a game where you have 51 total points there has been one touchdown from scrimmage amazing and remember both of those guys are coming off career high passing days a week ago but not against these two defenses they did second down and four and Heisman Trophy winner from years ago he's down play his whistle dead Westerman making the tackle on Williams it'll be third down and three I'll tell you who's played a much better game tonight than what I thought he did a week ago is Andre Gerard who came over from the Dallas Cowboys cut there and I think in part you know that maybe they're thinking that just in case something happens to Matt Burke Gerard has been to the Pro Bowl five straight years as a center but in last week I thought he struggled a little bit with some of those zone blocking plays but tonight he's been much more on target third and three. Flacco's first completion since the end of the first quarter is a pass to Laquan Williams. The rookie moving the chains here and into Jets territory. I'll tell you, I had a couple of coaches tell me they think Laquan Williams is as talented or more talented than some of the guys that they drafted this year, including Torrey Smith and Tandon Doss. Big physical guy, very natural athlete, and he was the college teammate of Torrey Smith coming out. And when they found out they were going to be playing together, there was a big time celebration. Playing right down the road in College Park, and no doubt Smith was the guy who paid for that celebration. <laughs> Second round pick as opposed to a free agent. Well, what a day this is going to be for the Harbaugh family. Father Jack, longtime coach, and there he is looking on. and sure he took a great phone call from son Jim earlier today because the 49ers came from way back to beat Philadelphia and in that road trip with wins in Cincy and Philly 
And Son John has a 17 point lead with 10 and a half minutes to play here. Yeah, and out in the NFC West, San Francisco at 3 and 1 now with a two game lead over everybody. The only loss was that come from behind win by the Dallas Cowboys, who played nothing but unbelievably dramatic games this season on both sides of the ledger. Rice turns the corner. And a flag. Uh, Holding. Offense number 88. 10 yard penalty is still second down. And Dennis Pitta trying to make a hook block. It's always a little easier when you grab the jersey. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. It's finally official. Ray Lewis has taken over as offensive coordinator <laughs> for the Ravens. I don't remember exactly what happened, but something after the playoff appearance. There's Cam Cameron, the true offensive coordinator. I'm just joking. <clears throat> but after the playoff loss a year ago, Ray was not exactly too thrilled with the fact that they were still throwing it around and making mistakes on offense. When they get a lead, he expects the defense to be able to take over the game. So there's always that internal conflict that happens between offense and defense. Now, Baltimore, of course, for a decade has been almost all about defense. Here's Williams. And Ricky loses the football. The ball is out. And it was Calvin Pace who created it. And Moore makes the recovery here. Really good play by Calvin Pace that time. He fends off one block, ducks another, and gets a solid hit to get it out. So the Jets get it back in Baltimore territory. Still breathing. This Thursday, check out Prime Suspect. At 10 o'clock Eastern and Pacific Time, Central and Mountain, starring Maria Pello, prime suspect. Thursday nights on NBC. It's a good show. Check that one out. Mm -hmm. Seventh turnover of the game. Four by the Jets, three by Baltimore. And the Jets start from the 44-yard line. Fake the end around to McKnight. And then the pass is incomplete. Burris could not get free of Williams. And we go back to the Ricky Williams fumble. Yeah, just a good play on the outside by Calvin Pace. Watch him miss, first of all, Dennis Dixon, and then going to jump in outside of Leach and get the hit right on it. The problem was the Jets didn't pick it up and return it for a touchdown, so they sent their offense back out there. <laughs> that is a problem. I'm telling you. Second and ten. Tomlinson to the backfield. Holmes comes to the near side. Here comes action from the right side. The pass has gotten away to Holmes, but only for a couple and another flag. And then he fumbled the ball out of bounds. So they maintained possession. We've had seven turnovers, 16 penalties, five returns for touchdowns. Pick the flag up. Fortunately, and it's third down and nine. Sanchez gets it away, and the pass intended for Keller is incomplete. And he could feel Ray Lewis. Providing accompaniment for down. Yeah, Ray Lewis likes to wander around in the middle of the field, basically almost in a safety kind of position. And Dustin Keller certainly remembers from a season ago how it felt when Ray Lewis got him then and comes back and gets him again. Maybe he remembered that hit he took a season ago. Had him in a triple stack. Conley's punt. Be saved. Touchback with 9.09 remaining in the fourth. And the Ravens are up 34 to 17. As we come back, the officials had a discussion. They've ruled the ball down at the one yard line, but we want to show you something. This is Cole who goes into the end zone, comes back out. But if the ball hits the goal line, it's a touchback. Even though he comes in and reestablishes both feet down, right. we're going to get a challenge. We have now. to get a challenge here because Baltimore should have the ball at the 20-yard line. 
So this they're seeing the same thing we're seeing here. And basically, and it's easy to do, we got distracted too. He gets both feet reestablished despite the fact he was in the goal line. The ruling on the field is the first touch by the kickers at the one yard line is being challenged by Baltimore. Well, so when, when, when Mike goes over to the hood, he sees the ball hit the goal line and they come out to the 20. Pretty simple. All right, Mike Carey coming out. Sure to reverse this and bring it to the 20. After review, the ball hit on the goal line, which creates an immediate touchback. First and 10 on the 20 yard line for Baltimore. Baltimore will not be charged with a team timeout. So Harbaugh wins the challenge. Ryan coached under Harbaugh for one year. I think you follow the sport, you know the story. When Brian Billick got fired after the 07 season. Ryan interviewed for the job and the conventional wisdom was that he was going to get the job. But he didn't. They had a five win season. And wanted some fresh blood and went to the outside. As Flacco hands the ball off and Rice picks up six. But remember too, Jason Garrett was offered the job. They were negotiating with Jason who was at Dallas at the time. And Jason was also being talked to by Atlanta and then Garrett at the end pulled out and that's how Harbaugh John came in after spending a lot of years with Andy Reid at Philadelphia and he and Ryan were on the same staff back at the University of Cincinnati in the mid 90s. Yeah, and a lot of hard feelings still Ray Lewis said everybody was heartbroken that Rex didn't get the Ravens job. Defensive guys definitely wanted it. Second and five. And this is Rice, so you go back to the University of Cincinnati in 96. Rex, the defensive coordinator, John, the assistant head coach. With the Ravens, there they were. And then Rex gets the Jets job the following year. And they actually had met back in Kentucky when they were at different schools, but Ryan didn't remember it. We were talking to John the other day. He goes, hey, wait a minute, Rex. And Rex had called him about the Cincinnati job in, in 96, helping him get it. Don't you remember we met? Is that not? <laughs> Third and four. And that's caught as Flacco hits Ed Dixon up at the 36 yard line. Tackled there by Eric Smith. Todd Heap, the longtime tight end around here, is the Ravens really went young, and especially at the tight end position with Pitta and Ed Dixon. And Dixon's played very well, sort of filled in as that pass catcher and three rookies starting at wide receiver talking to Harbaugh he said we just felt like we had to get better at the end of the season we didn't have enough healthy bodies a lot of times with those older players to make a good run in the playoffs so they made the decision to make changes and go young not very many teams get rid of eight count of eight regular starters from the prior year but that's exactly what Baltimore did and only Seattle had a bigger purge with 11 gone. You know but the interesting thing too was the fact that they took some chances you know this offensive line during the exhibition season for the Ravens was a mess and they kind of fell into some guys like Andre Gerard and Bryant McKinney who were released for salary cap reasons from Dallas and Minnesota respectively and it kind of saved the day here. Second and nine, Williams. Well, it's a very well-run franchise. Bart Modell owned it for a number of years and then handed the baton over to Steve Bashotti. And Ozzie Newsom, there he is. Ozzie has really done a masterful job with drafting, picking up free agents, and keeping this team in contention almost every year. Yeah, and I owe him five bucks because Alabama got Florida last night. Ah. I'm sure he'll uh, be sitting outside their <laughs> broadcast booth looking for it. Would you bet it even for crying out loud? You don't know Ozzy, do you? <laughs> of course I did. Third and six. <laughs> and Williams will be stopped a yard shy of the first down, but some good uh, clock chewing time here for the Ravens who take another four minutes by the time they punt this off the clock and we're down under five and a half to play. Yeah so 
for the Ravens. They catch a break today. Pittsburgh ends up getting beat. And so now the Ravens in first place. Assuming this one holds. The only break the Jets get today basically is that Buffalo finally lost and Cincinnati came from behind. And to the 22 yard line Curly makes the catch. Meanwhile Green Bay knocks off Denver. Rogers first player in NFL history 400 passing yards 4 TD passes two rushing touchdowns. Atlanta held on Seattle had a chance for a 61 yard field goal at the end. So we've got Atlanta going against Green Bay and, and who would have thought you, you would figure well Green Bay had a really good chance to to be unbeaten at this point in the season. And then there were the Lions. It's been a remarkable year and a remarkable day. If you watch football this oh, afternoon, tremendous. the teams that had two and three touchdown leads early in those games almost all gave them up. Well, it's been that kind of a season. I mean, it's been happening almost every week. There's two big Buffalo comebacks, Detroit against Minnesota, Minnesota blowing leads. Holmes can't make the catch. This is the uh, tweet by Jermichael Finley, the tight end for the Packers. 4 0, A Rod and the rest of us on point. 49 points, Atlanta Sunday night football. Here we come, let's go. There's your promo. Yeah, I wonder why we put that up there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Year of the takeover is what Yaddo means. Yada, yada, yada. Second and 10. Tomlinson. Four stop by Lewis, so one Hall of Famer sends the other out of bounds. Lodi Nada on the chase as well, and kind of funny, Lodi Nada, when he got his big contract, somebody put on the tape, and then him draw it here. All right, Ray Lewis on the outside, chasing down the other Hall of Famer. I'll tell my story in a minute. Third and six from the 25. Can't make the catch. No flag. Covered there by Danny Gore. And as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. Yeah, well, the Haloti Nodic gets a $60 billion contract, and the ATM inside the Ravens facility was out of order. And it said out of order, and somebody else wrote, because Haloti Nada was here to call the cash out of the ATM. <laughs> and Warren Buffett wants him to pay more in taxes. Feel it at the 38 yard line by Ed Reed. Well, you're making 60 million, right? There you go. There you go. All right, Ray Rice, <laughs> what a night it was for him. Check out the jump cut that he's so famous for. Hard to get a handle on that guy. Also, pretty good as a receiver. Coming out of the backfield, picking up a big first down. And some. And then as a blocker, watch this one. Dong. <laughs> so Madden does boom and you do die. I don't know. I gotta try to come up with something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Rice. At, <laughs> at least I didn't go to Warren Buffett. <laughs> well, well, you know what? It's almost Tuesday. <laughs> Ravens can milk the clock. And look forward to a bye week. We asked John Harbaugh the other day about an early bye week five. And he said, you know what? We have enough injuries. And we haven't even talked about people like Lee Evans tonight, the other receiver, and David Reed, the great run back specialist. And Ben Grubbs has been hurt. So he's going to be able to get a bunch of people healthy. And meanwhile, the Jets make that trip to Foxborough next week. And there's the Ravens' upcoming schedule. Texans come in here. Then to go to Jacksonville and Arizona comes in. And then on Sunday night, November 6th, Baltimore at Pittsburgh. Well, they may end up getting them without Andre Johnson, too. It looked like he got hurt in that one. Yeah, it looked very serious at first. And then he was able to get off under his own power. And we'll have to see. LT's had a good year, though, this year, hasn't he? Coming out of the backfield, they reduced his role. He's leading rusher. 
a year ago. Now they just dumping the ball and I think that uh, maybe you had it earlier more yards after the catch than any running back in the game right now. Averaging over 14 yards after the catch and a lot of those coming on that one play last week in Oakland. And the handoff here goes to Rice. So again in a game with 51 points only one touchdown from scrimmage by that man Rice in the first quarter from three yards to so the Jets on the road next week at New England then Miami comes to the Meadowlands and San Diego comes in then their bye week and then take a look at that you, you go into November and you got the Bills at Buffalo and then New England on Sunday night November the 13th so yeah, and Vince Wilfork tough. awaits Colin Baxter of Nick Mangold is not ready for next week too so maybe somewhere in the back of Rex's mind he was thinking you know if I only get him for one of them I'd rather have him next week and that punt goes into the end zone with 2 11 to play in the fourth quarter you're not going to win a lot of games when you're 10 out of 31 and that's what Flacco is tonight for 163 yards when your defense does what it does you'll get a W well, yeah I mean if I'm not mistaken I think the Jets offense really has accounted for three points for their side and what 21 going the other way right big day this is a good defense and I tell you the other thing Al that impressed me is they have some depth now uh, some guys like Pernell McPhee rushing the passer Paul Kruger we saw him making plays even Brandon McKinney and Arthur Jones this is not just a team that, that has to play the starters all the time. Depth, rotator, keep fresh. Sanchez's his pass incomplete. And for Mark tonight, 33%. 11 out of 33 for 119. Now let's go back to the future and how we all got started here tonight. Colin Baxter, it's been that kind of night. That time it was Arthur Jones taking the turn. Second and ten. And Tomlinson, he'll get taken down before he get out of the backfield by Arthur Jones, guy who was just talking about fifth round pick last year out of Syracuse, and we get to the two minute warning. Been about the defense tonight. Not much new in regard to the Ravens in that regard. 34 17. Packers Falcons a week from tonight and coming up after the game, the Wendy's post game report. Michelle with an interview from the field. Bob, Tony, and Mike wrapping up the game, and we will take a look ahead to that encounter next week at the Georgia Dome. Final two minutes. Third and ten here for the Jets. And that's incomplete. Well, I tell you, you look at these quarterbacks' numbers tonight, you'd think it was played in a monsoon. Yeah, a lot of times there's just no receivers out. That time Ray Lewis ended up with a Danian Tomlinson in coverage, and he just grabbed him. Well, yeah, that's one way to cover him out there. There you go, right here. Watch this coverage. Wonder why you can't throw the ball to LT. There you go. Good luck. And Ray's son is apparently some player. Here we go. Go for it on fourth down, too. Last gasp. And it's a fitting ending, I guess. Another incomplete pass. And Sanchez winds up on the turf. So the Ravens can run the clock out, assuming the Jets uh, do not take their timeouts with a minute and 50. 38 rushing yards tonight, fewest by the Jets since back in 06. Yeah, so last week they gave up the most yards rushing, and tonight they failed to rush it. So ground and pound. It's non-existent here the last couple of weeks. But 
in reality, you can't take an all-pro player out of the middle of your lineup against this defense and these defensive linemen and expect to have a day. It's just not going to happen. Without Nick Mangold, this tremendous offensive line becomes, I'll give them average. Well, right from the get-go, I mean, there were a ton of storylines in this game. And some kneel downs will end it. The Jets are not going to screw around by using their timeouts here. And it, it, it became, you know, right from the start, you said it at the beginning of the game, it's the center. It, it boils down to that. And it started that way, and it was disastrous at the beginning. And the Jets did get back into the game. But then mistakes took them back out of the game, and the Ravens are on their way to a 3 and one record. Slauson, he took a few snaps at center after they had to just put Baxter on the on the bench for a series or a series and a half, and they okay. can only hope that Mangold is ready next week. Yeah, Dacos got in there for a little while. Robert Turner, who was supposed to be their sort of next guy in, is on injury reserve with a broken leg, and so they were thin coming in and thinner coming out. Well, since 1998, these two teams have met seven times, and the Ravens have won them all. They rolled a seven tonight. Longest ever winning streak versus any team. And then there's, well, Rex, and he was with Ray Lewis for 10 years and with Suggs. There's a lot of love and respect going both ways. There.